I have a very compelling image here, but I'd like to call more attention to the piercing eyes. And I want to make sure that it's fully editable. So I'm going to use the new Camera Raw filter in Photoshop CC because I received this as a Photoshop file. So it's not TIFF or JPEG or something shot in RAW. In the past, in earlier versions of Photoshop, I had no Camera Raw filter, so I had to do this with different tools. And actually, it took quite a bit longer. To start, to make sure that my Camera Raw filter is fully editable, I'm going to choose Filter, Convert for Smart Filters. And I'll click OK. And I'll name this layer Guy. Now, once I've converted it to Smart Filters, it's an editable Smart Object, and I could safely run Filter, Camera Raw Filter. You can also run Liquify on Smart Objects now, which you couldn't do in previous versions, and the more powerful Field Blur, Iris Blur, and Tilt Shift. So a lot more options under the Filter menu are now available as editable, protected smart objects. So let's run Camera Raw. And when I run Camera Raw, I'm going to hit Command Plus or Control Plus to zoom into those eyes and use my wheel on my mouse to move around. Here, I will choose the Adjustment Brush. And I get a paintbrush tool where I can paint in corrections. I think this size is OK. Maybe I want to go for three so it fits completely in the eye. But in the Camera Raw dialog, once you go below a certain size, the circle will vanish. So you may have to zoom in more. So when I chose a size of three, I saw only a crosshair. When I zoomed in more, I did see my circle. And I'm going to go too far with the exposure to see where I'm painting this correction. So I'll paint into the whites of his eyes, paint into the colored portion. <laughs> and now it starts to look a little terrifying, but I could see where I miss and get into the skin. I use this technique in order to make sure I have the most accurate corrections. And now that it's a little bit terrifying, let's come in and erase. And I'll check my brush settings. I'm still on a three. I still have a soft feather and I'll erase a bit along the edges. There we go. Now the whites are clearly better, but I've gone too far, obviously. So let's back that down. I'd also like to keep the pupils very black. So I will go to Erase and erase completely out of the pupil. In fact, I'm going to erase all the iris of the eye because I'm going to do some over sharpening and bigger movements on the iris. So I really just wanted to whiten the eye whites. And I will hit Command-0 on the Mac or Control-0 on Windows to get an overall picture of where I've moved the eye whites before, after. So they're definitely whiter, but I might want to just move the highlights whiter. There we go. That's a little bit better and more natural looking. So I'll zoom in with Command Plus or Control Plus, And now I want another new correction simply in the iris, the colored portion of the eye. And I'm going to zoom in very far so I can paint this in accurately. So when I do new, I'm just aiming for the color portion on this side. I'll hold down spacebar to scoot it over and aim for the colored portion on that side. And in this case, I could take the shadows, much darker or lighter, the exposure, much darker or lighter, and really create that demonic look. So you have to be careful about that. But that's a look some people go for. If I lighten the exposure, really go way too far with the highlights, and eyes can take a lot of clarity a lot of mid-tone contrast. I tend to move the values really far in one direction or the other to see if I'm happy with what I'm doing. And I'm going to go very far with sharpening. 
really make every fleck in that eye stand out. And I think I'll finish this off with a little bit of saturation boosting. And if I turn preview off and on, there is my before and after. But along the edge of the eye, it's usually preferred that you have a richness to that edge. There's more of the color. I could spend all day to be a perfectionist on this, so I'll let it go. And I'm going to erase in a very small edge a two-pixel brush edge right here to keep some of the darker edge of the eyes. And I'll hit Command-0 or Control-0 to fit in window. I'll hide the pins because I find those distracting. And here is before and after. Hopefully it's subtle, but it does really make those eyes the focal point of the image. If I decide I've gone too far with the eye whites or any portion, I could show the pins, select the correction for each, and make adjustments on given areas. Then check myself with before and after. But when I hit OK, because this is a smart filter, I can double click on it tomorrow or next week or any time down the road and recorrect. So if I go back to the adjustment brush, here are my pins. I could go farther with the highlights. Click OK. It's forever editable. And I only showed one little thing you could do, the adjustment brush. All of the settings that are available in Camera Raw can now be run as a filter. And preferably, I recommend a smart filter so you have the ability to go back and edit, thereby really eliminating the need for a mask, especially when you do something like an adjustment brush. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial of running Camera Raw as a filter.